So I was in Joann's the other day and I saw this striped cotton fabric that I liked and I didn't get it. So I decided to come back to Joann's today so that I can pick it up because I want to make this vintage top. It's really cute. It ties in the back. So I thought, okay, I think that fabric will work. So I'm going to share the fabric with you. Okay, it's right over here and it's peeking out. I see it. It's just a simple blue and white stripe, but this is something I really like. It's definitely my style, and I think that it would be really cute. And the pattern also calls for some trim, so I'm gonna have to get like some lace trim to go around the sleeves and around the bottom of the top. So that's where I'm headed right now. I was looking all up and down the aisle for the trim that I wanted to go with the stripes and I didn't see anything that I was just super super crazy about so I ended up putting the stripe fabric back and then I went and got some eyelet because I saw a ton of eyelet trim so I was like okay well maybe I will make the top out of eyelet and then that way the trim you know will match so the trim is going to go over the sleeve and then it's going to go down at the waist area and I think that will be cute together. So I'm going to work on this top. So I have the pleats sewn in. This is the front opening with the little V here. I really like these darts. The point is at the bottom instead of at the top. So I thought that that was interesting. And this is how it looks from the back. I think that is cute. I think that's giving it a cute little look. Okay, so right now I have the eyelid fabric around the armhole. And I also put in the, what are these, the ties. And they were very narrow. It took me forever to turn them inside out. If I ever make this again, I will definitely make the ties a little bit wider but I think I'm gonna stop for the day but yes this is where I am so far it here and this is the right side of the top so what I'm going to do now is fold the ruffle on top of the tie fold it over like that on both sides let me pull this tie in so it won't be hanging off so I'm gonna fold the ruffle over the tie and then I'm going to take the inset right sides together meaning you know the right side of this inset is going to be facing the right side of the blouse or top and then 
I am going to pin this down according to the directions over the ruffle, over the ruffle, and then sew it. When it comes to sewing the side of the inset down after you do the top of it, it looks like you have to move this finished edge of the ruffle out of the way because I sewed it wrong the first time and I had to unpick it. So looks like you fold this inset on top of this gathered tie. Fold that down and then sew from here to there, but just make sure that the finished edge of the ruffle is out of the way. The top is all finished and it has a button on the side. So the button goes in the back and then the buttonhole goes in the front and it keeps the side closed. And then the ties that are in the back of the top tie around your waist area. So this part in the back will go around your waist and then you take the front and you wrap it around the back and create a bow. And then it will look something like this. did make a size small. The pattern calls for a four and a half inch wide trim. I just decided to use three and three quarters inch wide trim because I couldn't find the four and a half inch wide that you know I really liked and this worked out okay. There is a finished edge on the trim and before you can apply the trim to the top it has to be gathered at the top and so I just cut off the finished edge of the trim and that way I was able to put the basting stitches across the top so that I can gather it onto the top. So before I go, I wanna leave you with a love share of a product that I really like to use to clean my iron. It is this iron cleaner by Prim and I recorded a video using this iron cleaner. So I will link that video below if you're interested in seeing how well it works.